Good morning. Good morning, Colonel. How y'all doing? Okay, just let me know when you want me to start. It's people are still coming in. I'll wait until everybody gets in. Well, you got your TV on behind you. And it, it's it's um it's down. The volume is down. I know, but it's such a distraction. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> All right, Melinda. Thank you. Now, if you could put the CJ logo up there, you can leave it on. I wish I could. <laughs> Find my remote. Ah. Hold on, child. She's looking for her remote. <laughs> okay. Helen, we still can you still can't be heard? Good morning. Johnson. Hey Marie. Good morning, Mr. Mason. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Hi, Frida. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Kamalita. Hello. Hey, Kashan. Hey, Mr. Harris. Hey, Mr. Johnson. Maria. Hi, is everybody in? Is it open, Charles? Uh, yes, you ask people on mute. Okay, Gwen, then go ahead and ask everybody to do what they should do. So, Gwen. Okay, you can take them off mute, uh, Charles, Charles, so that I can uh, welcome everybody. <clears throat> uh, take everyone off mute? Oh, no, don't take them off mute. They can still hear me. I keep forgetting. Yeah, take Gwen off mute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it together. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the Chatham Business Association's monthly membership meeting. Thank you for taking the time out this morning to join us. Uh, we're looking forward to a really good meeting today. And um, just want to start the meeting off like we always do while we're in the same room with uh, just a moment of silence. And in particular now, because of everything that is going on, some of us have already been affected by COVID, whether we've had it ourselves or have family members. Some of us have lost some people in our lives. So um, I think no time like the present to just take a, a moment and, and just have a moment of silence for those that have been affected by this virus. Alrighty, amen, thank you. Again, welcome to the Chatham Business Association's monthly membership meeting. Um, we hope that you, all of you are doing well with your families, that you're staying in place, uh, staying safe. Right now, we'd like to start the meeting as we always do with a, a, a brief introduction, keep it short, you know, because we wanna make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to say something, but we don't want y'all talking too long, so. Um, Nothing's different, it's the same. <laughs> Whether it's on, on Cottage Grove over here, I'm still bossy. Uh, anyway, uh, let's start with a member, Charles, if you can unmute um, a Mr. Donald Halton. Introduce yourself and let us know who you are and uh, whether or not you're a member. And a uh, couple of seconds, just to say something. Thank you very much and uh, appreciate the moment of silence and the work that we're all doing. My name is Donald Hardy. My company's name is AC BIM LLC. And we do a lot of industry and management in the Chicago metropolitan area. Thank you. Okay, Kashan Collier, are you there? I am, good morning. Um, I am actually the business development manager for Miles Development Incorporated. Uh, we're a construction and development firm on the south side of Chicago um, over in Alvin Gresham. Been in business for five years. Um, WBM, WMBC, I can't even think of my acronyms today, certified and um, been to a couple meetings some time ago and happy to be able to join again. Um, Zoom is great. I'm happy for this opportunity. So thank you for having us. Thank you, Kashan. Uh, could I ask um, those sure. that are there 
faces covered, if you can uncover them, please. It, it would make the meeting so much better. If you could do that for me, please. All right, let's go to um, Julie. Can you unmute her? Julie, too. Julie, introduce yourself. Can you hear us, Julie? Going once, going twice. We're gonna move on to Claudia. Claudia, can you, can you unmute her, Claudia, for me, please? Carmelita, is that Carmelita? Claudia. Claudia. Yes. yes. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm gonna be going back and forth because I have a client here, so I Okay, go ahead, Claudia. Um, Claudia Gunter, the owner of Panther Training. Um, I thought we were bit, I thought we remembered. I had to double check because we we're new. Um, not new to the health, wellness, and fitness industry. Been doing this for 35 years. We just moved to Chatham about two years ago, <clears throat> and uh, just looking to see, you know, what additional services and things are available here. We've worked downtown for most of that year. I'm okay. going to on and off a video though, <laughs> so but I'm still listening. Okay. That's All my right, Carmelita, you can go ahead. Hi, I'm Carmelita Doyle, and I'm the Allstate agent. I've been in the area for 30 years. Um, I've been in and out of meetings, and I'm joining you guys this morning. Welcome, Carmelita. Thank Hi, you. Marie. Marie, you ready? Can you unmute her, uh, Charles? Marie? Um, really, my name is Anna Hall. Um, I'm the president of PH Divine Plumbing. Uh, I'm a plumbing contractor with all the certification, and I'm also a member. Okay, sorry, it said Marie. I'm just reading what's up there. I apologize. Um, I'm not sure. Is that Adam? That's Adam with CBA, I think. Right? Oh, Adam with CBA. I'm sorry, Adam. Okay. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning, Adam. Uh, Frida? This is Frida. How you doing? Frida? Uh, I'm pretty good. How are you guys? And hope everyone is being healthy and safe. Good morning. Uh, this is Kevin. It's not here, but this is Frida. We own Madison Enterprises, property management and real estate investing. We're members of uh, CBA. Thank you. All right. And Nicole? I see Nicole down there. Um, Nicole, can you hear us? All righty, moving on. There's someone that's calling in. You on the phone? Or from yep. a 630 number? Yep, that's, that's Nicole. Yep, I was talking. I, you couldn't hear me. This is uh, Nicole Johnson Scales. I'm part of the community development team at Fifth Third. And um, here to support my colleague. Carl Riley, as well as Melinda Kelly, who sits on uh, Fifth Third's Community Advisory Board. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Nicole. Uh, Ron Harris, Hearns, I'm sorry, Ron Hearns. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name's uh, Ron Hearns. I'm the uh, director at the uh, KRA Westside American Job Center. Uh, we are one of the contractors uh, for the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. Um, I, my face may look familiar to Melinda. <laughs> it's, yeah, been, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a few years. Um, I've uh, operated workforce development centers all over Chicago, the north side, west side, well, north side, south side, south suburbs, and currently the west side. We are now trying to get back into uh, Chatham and uh, operate the uh, Betty Howard uh, Center. So we place uh, a proposal um, to operate the Workforce Development Center there at 630 East 79th Street. Uh, the proposals were due yesterday. Uh, we did submit ours. Uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed and um, hopefully we'll be back in uh, Chatham again. Well, welcome back, Ron. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I did recently um, process my uh, membership invoice, so uh, I guess I can technically call myself a member, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, Ron? You are a member. <laughs> Excellent. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Maurice. Maurice Johnson. Good morning, everyone. Maurice Johnson, CBA member. Um, long time uh, member. Lived in the Chatham area for a long time. And I am the owner of Antares Computer Systems. I resell all of the major computer brand name makers. All right. We can barely hear you, John, but Maurice, but we heard you. Um, John is the next person. I'm not sure. That's not, is it John? J-O-N. J-O-N? He's muted too, though. They're unmuted now. John? Hi. Hey, how are you guys doing? Great. Thank you. We can't see you, John, so we don't know. Oh. <laughs> it's not John. You know what? Jonathan. Hey, yeah. how are you guys doing? Hey, Jonathan. Good, good, good. good. Um, I'm the owner of a company called AJ Materials. And um, I'm glad to be on a call to chat of members. It's good to see you guys from a distance, unfortunately, but... Where we live in. Thank you, Jonathan. Charles Cassie. Healthy and well. Uh, State Farm Insurance agent. Um, member. Uh, happy to be on the call today. Looking forward to the uh, presentation. All right. Is that uh, Quincy? I'm sorry. Almost missed you up there. Quincy Johnson. Hi. Uh, I'm Quincy Johnson. I'm a guest. Uh, I'm glad I was, had an invite to be here. Uh, I'm the owner of Johnson Blacktop LLC. We're an asphalt paving company serving uh, Chicago and the uh, seven counties. Thank you. Thank you so much, Quincy. Did I miss uh, Yolanda? Uh, no, Yolanda, you with CBA? No? I'm a, a member. Oh, oh, come on in, Yolanda, then. Let's go. Hey, how you doing? It is Yolanda. I am an insurance agent, uh, formerly known to be with American Family Insurance of Deborah Purnell. Um, also, I own Rehab Divas, which is a uh, construction company on the south side of Chicago, as well as Fresh Start Maintenance, where we do maintenance and rehab for properties. All right, Yolanda, good to see you. Good to see everyone. I think I got everyone except for the people that are speaking. Did I miss anyone? Melinda, you see, did I miss anyone? No? I think so. It seems like we got everybody. Okay, it looks like we got, and then uh, I'll introduce the board. Uh, go. Uh, well, Carl, you're speaking, so I'll introduce you later. Uh, Art Mason, I see you on there. You see me? I was well, trying I don't to... see you. I hear you. You hear me? Well, just go right. ahead and introduce yourself. Um, Art Mason with uh, Floor and Decor. I've uh, been on the board for at least, what, 10, 12 years? Yeah. Yes, and we love you for it. And I enjoy it. <laughs> this is kind of weird taking this, you know, doing this call like this, but this is the world we live in, I guess. And it's going to be the way we're going to be living for a while. So yeah. we all just have to get used to it. Uh, and, can, and can, I, can I tell you one thing? Sure. You look real good. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd get that out. <laughs> All you guys do. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Art. <laughs> All right, no problem. <laughs> well, <laughs> that that was nice. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, and I'm Gwen Shaw. For those of you that don't know me, and I think you all do know me, but just in case, Gwen Shaw. And uh, not only I'm one of the board members and secretary, but I'm also the owner, the first and the only Black female to own a country financial in the state of Illinois. And uh, again, I'm just glad that everyone has made it here, um, although we didn't have to go far. And uh, I just want to, um, well, we don't have minutes for this meeting, but we will have minutes for the next time that we get together, okay? So we will get that out the way, but let's just get right into it. I want to bring to you one of my colleagues, uh, one of my fellow board members, I should say, uh, uh, Mr. Carl Riley. And let me just read to you his bio, if I could find it. 
darn it. What did I do with it? Uh, oh, see, I'll get it. Give me a second. I got it. And you know what, Gwen, before you do that, uh, uh -huh. Charles, could you put up a couple of slides and just want to kind of go over what we're going to talk about today and what how Chatham Business Association has shifted to make sure that we're offering relevant services to our members. So uh, everybody knows with this uh, coronavirus out here, it literally has wiped out the economic debt of, I mean, the, the economy of most of our businesses. Uh, as most people say, what is a common cold to some to black businesses can be the full blown, full blown flu. And as a result of that, I think, honestly, I, the city, the county, the state, and the federal government, I think have done a great job of trying to figure out how to help us as businesses keep our economic floor together. So today, what we're gonna talk about is a few things. I'm gonna uh, pretty much recap. So obviously the city is offering a program and the city's program, it's a $50,000 loan. Um, you have to show you're, you're not, uh, you're affected by coronavirus. The county just uh, kicked in and did a $20,000 loan that they're offering it's it's geared for those that are called gigs or, or 1099ers or individual uh that you can apply for and uh the staff who has done a great job of putting this together is also putting a resource page up on cba so that you can get a link to all of these things and then the state has also kicked in i mean they're working with the utility companies they're doing uh they're doing the unemployment uh vouchers they're kicking into overdrive but really what we asked the um our our banking board members to talk about was uh, the programs that are available on the federal level and i've highlighted some of the 10 things that might affect you and your employees there um i'm going to leave the payment protection program even though it's one of my favorite i think carl and uh shawana are going to talk about that a lot but mm -hmm. If you already have an SBA loan debt, there's relief there. Um, you know, the SBA started out with that $350,000 uh, uh, loan they were giving that was part of the disaster loan. They've upped it to a million. They're foregoing and they're waiving payments. The unemployment benefits, so for employees that you either have or may have had to let go or cut down their time, they're allowed to file for unemployment. Partial benefits. Um, Sick Leave and Family Medical Leave Act. We can post that on the website. The president signed into a bill, a new type of family medical leave. It allows your employees, depending on your business and what policy you implement, it allows you to care for your employees who may want to take some time off or may not be comfortable in coming to the work environment for them to be compensated and how you can treat it as a universal uh, uh, medical leave act that was implemented by the president that can be you know just adapted um, we're eligible for payroll tax relief some of these programs don't overlap but we can ask uh, PNC and fifth third about that there's cash payments so as of as early as of this weekend people if you file 2018 taxes you should be your employees you to be getting uh, a direct deposit from the federal government if they have your banking information. If they don't, there's a link that you can go in and, and file and, and get it. It'll take a little longer and checks are coming as well. Um, there's re the retirement plan where you can withdraw against that plan without penalty. And then obviously there's a uh, relief for federal student loan. And then the tax filing dates and payments for 2019 have been delayed to July 15, 2020. Uh, CBA's office, has been open if you call from 10 to 3 you have talked to paddling or you talk to beverly or you talk to myself because what we're doing is trying to help you navigate through this process make sure you have the correct links there are some fraudulent links out here uh helping you to uh there's a checklist which is pretty simple but sometimes just thinking through what you need to put together to submit to the banks so that they are in essence under, you know, underwriting your loan and advancing you money. 
and it's only guaranteed by the SBA bank. But the reality of it is, is that what we're helping business do is tell the story of their payroll because that's important in terms for you to qualify. The other thing we're doing is helping you rethink. The whole goal of this program is for you as a business owner, one, to help the state relieve people not filing for unemployment, which means to keep your employees on payroll, keep them intact. It also allows beginning April. So if your receptionist can no longer answer the phone, it doesn't mean that you have to let her go. You can, she can help you with marketing. Technology, as you can see, may be incorporated as a way of the world moving forward. So you can retweet, retweet job resumes, job descriptions in-house. You can create new to help you manage your business. You can tweak your business and growth plan. There's a lot of things you can do with your existing staff based on the talent. You can add new staff. And as you'll hear about the payment protection program, in my opinion, the federal government is doing probably what should have been done a long time ago, which is giving businesses the money to create the jobs, to keep them intact, which will jumpstart our economy. So the second slide is more about the federal programs that uh, I've asked Fifth Third and PNC to talk about and do the presentation. And we'll take questions after. But pretty much, I just want you all to know that one of the things about the businesses, and I'm so glad to see, I feel like you're all inviting us into your home. It feels good. It's technology, but it feels good to see you, is that you're not in it alone. We're here with you. I think the legislators have done a good job of putting things together. They're on their fourth stimulus package. We're gonna need your input to give them guidance because this may not be the first or last uh, catastrophic thing that will affect our economy but we're resilient folks and together we will make it through. So having said that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Gwen so she can, did you find what you needed Gwen? So you can announce our first speaker. And as you can see, all these, um, these are all the different links. So there's the disaster loan program. You've heard about that $10,000 grant. I just do want you to know the $10,000 grant or that you get is a thousand per individual, it's not a whole 10,000. So it depends on if it's only you and your business, you're gonna get $1,000 versus it's not a whole 10,000 lump sum. So I just kind of wanted to update you on that. And um, having said that, this will be on the uh, CBA, I think it's COV, the coronavirus uh, tab page for you to get later. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Gwen so she can introduce our guests. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good, because I don't have my screen on here. Um, so I want to introduce you to Carl Riley. Carl has an extensive background in commercial and business banking with over 10 years of financial industry experience. Prior to joining Fifth Third, Carl served as a business banking officer and through his consistent customer focused worth ethic has been recognized as a resource leader and connector in the community. As a small business community leader for the Fifth Third Bank, Carl partners with business owners to identify all of their financial needs. He, he, he takes a consultative approach to deliver specific advice and customized solutions that offer value and convenience. Carl is a graduate of Florida A&M University with a Bachelor of Science in business, business Administration. He resides in Chicago, Illinois with his family. He is also an active, active on several boards, including Growing Home Inc., Channel Business Association, of course, Chicago Neighborhood Initiative, and Neighborhood Housing Services. He also serves, he also enjoys traveling. He's an extensive traveler, entrepreneurship, staying physically active, and supporting his children in the interest, in their interest. I'd like to bring to you a Mr. Carl Riley. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so, um, all right, so I wanna help you all and uh, make sure that you are comfortable with any questions you have that you need to ask. So I'm going to say, if you have a question, feel free to type it into the Zoom group chat on the bottom. You'll see it below, and I'll be able to read it back to you and try to answer it for you. I also invite any other banker that's there to come off a of mute, and then they can also help with uh, any information about their organization. So uh, Fifth Third Bank is a SBA lender. Um, we are able to support you with your uh, PPP loan request. Um, there is a document you're looking at right now. And what this document is doing is helping to protect the paychecks of our Americans, fellow Americans, right? 
Um, what the government has decided to do is to give the money to the small business owner, which will then allow them to keep their employee, retain them, uh, pay them, but hopefully have them stay home. Um, if they can stay home, stay home or work from home or do something like, like Melinda said, something different, repurpose themselves. Um, the goal is to take the pressure off the business owner. And so this loan uh, is a 24 month loan at 1% interest which will be forgiven up to the amount that you can verify uh, for payroll uh, with your rent or um, your utilities expenses, right? Payroll is the biggest and most important part of this thing. And so I ask each of you um, that, you know, if you, if you don't do your payroll currently, that you please get with a Paycor, Paylocity, ADP, a CPA or somebody to make sure that you're documenting that you're paying your employees properly um, if you take this money, because I don't want to have a situation for you all where you, you don't have the proper documentation. This is part of the reason why it took the big banks a little bit of time to put this together to make sure they did it properly. We don't want to have you guys for the I got you moment. We want to make sure that when we do this thing, we have all the answers so that we can tell you properly what you need to do to have this forgiven. So if you got any questions, please feel free to drop them to the group, the Zoom group chat to the side. Um, let's scroll down a little bit more on this, this uh, document so that people can see. If you uh, could just slide down to the next part of it. All right. So uh, am I eligible? Uh, here's the th businesses that are eligible. If you've got under 500 employees, all right? If you are a 501c3 or not-for-profit, if you are just an individual person, 1099, like a realtor or insurance or uh, somebody that's doing uh, work, if you are an independent contractor. Um, you also see some tribal businesses and then of course, uh, veteran organizations. The ones that, um, okay, so it, what you need is that application, right? Um, you're supposed to do it, I've seen real estate offices. The real estate office is unique, like an insurance office. They're gonna do their employees, not the 1099. So if you're a realtor, you're gonna do your own but then your broker is going to pay for this receptionist and whoever else supports that organization. And they're going to do that loan for them. All right. So if you're an individual broker or something like that, you're going to do your own application. Um, so, you know, you can take a look at this, but then also scroll down a little bit. Churches can also now apply for it. Uh, have staff uh, got some clarity on that. That was a question. So how do you calculate what your payroll is? Now, if you have your 940 or your 941 or W3s, or if you currently use uh, Paycor, Paylocity, ADP, one of those fantastic organizations that keeps us out of uh, liens, they will provide you with uh, a summary of what you did in 2019 in payroll. Uh, if you go on their websites for your payroll, you'll see it in regards to PPP or COVID. You'll be able to see a little report that 2019 that shows what your average payroll was and so they will also give you, divide that by 12, that's your base number, times it by 2.5 will give you an idea of how big your loan will be. I keep saying the word loan because um, if you don't document how you pay your people and you don't do it properly, it's going to be a loan. So if you have all your documentation and you use a payroll provider, then they'll be forgiven and it'll be not a problem. But just want to make sure everybody's aware of what's going on with that. So the maximum employee salary that is for the annual is $100,000, which means uh, that you can get $8,333 a month to pay that one employee. So if you're making two, $300,000 a year, you're, max, you're capped out at $100,000. You also need to provide just how you, you know, how you justify that just so they can see that with your application. Just a separate little sheet of paper with your payroll stuff just to show that. Um, so you can include, um, all the stuff that you normally include, which is like the 401k and the payroll benefits and all that stuff in your numbers. So that way it's, it's easy for you. Don't make it hard, but of course, provide that background information. Do I have any questions yet? Okay. No, I don't. All right. So, uh, keep going now. All right. So, um, what, I, what I've seen so far, it's very important that you fill out the application all the way through. 
all right? Um, it makes it easier for us to input it. We can't spend, this is a very unique, I've taken some time out of my day right now to do this for you guys, but we can't spend all day on the phone talking about this. This is not a normal loan. There's no credit score requirement. There's no credit score requirement, right? Uh, as long as you're under $2.5 million, all right? Um, there's basically, what you're gonna do is apply at your current bank because, and the reason for this is they need to know who you are. It's called KYC or know your customer. After 9-11, we have to know our customers to make sure that there's no fraudulent stuff going on. So uh, if you have a current banking relationship with Fifth Third Bank, or if you'd like to get one, um, we can connect you with a branch, a branch to support you with that. Uh, ideally though, if you already have a bank account with a nice, whatever bank that you, know, you have, um, they should be able to support you with this application. So just feel free to take that information, take this application that Melinda and Carletta will sell out, send out to you. Um, to your bank and then have them submit this for you if they are an SBA lender. Um, some banks are getting in, into it right now. Uh, if you bank with, I'm not going to talk, it's just they don't, they're not ready yet, but if you, if you bank with Northern Trust, they don't have the ability to do this yet. So um, you may want to try Fifth Third, uh, PNC, Chase, BMO Harris, one of the banks that's ready to go now. Um, so yeah. I just wanted to mention a couple of things too. You mentioned they're not for profit. So right now the PPP doesn't take 501c6, so use your 501c3, or mm -hmm. they I think they accept the veteran status. The other thing about the bank, I just want to mention that it is a federal government program, but it is, as Carl mentioned, going through different banks. So each bank may have a little bit different criteria in terms of the documentation, but we will Put on our website the list of documents. The main thing is to make sure they're looking for consistency. So they want to see your payroll from February 2019 to 2020 because that gives them an average. And I know some of the people have spent, I think, a little bit more time in trying to figure out those numbers. But I just want to say in Excel or whatever, you know, if you are fortunate enough to your payroll service, they are very helpful. Um, if not, again, the goal is looking at your banking information. They're looking for consistency of what your payroll was like paying you or yourself for those 12 months. Uh, the money, the banks need to underwrite this in order to make sure that it turns into a loan that can be converted into a grant for you. Is yep. that, for instance, if you are filing bankruptcy or you're in bankruptcy, they have to make sure in order for it to end up to be forgivable, that some of that money isn't going to that past debt. So while each bank is asking for different information and we get the calls and we hear, you know, why is this, it should be one, two, three. It really has to be, they're gonna have to sell this to the government that they wrote it under the guidelines of that legislation and then it's also for your benefit because how they take it in depends on how you end up getting it forgivable. And our, our goal would be is to make sure that you get this eight weeks of operations because again, it can, it's meant for payroll. But uh, one of the things that this is, if this hasn't brought attention to anything of us as employers is that we need to offer our employees good healthcare benefits. So you can, the cost that it costs you to keep your, uh, to get your benefit, your, your employees in a health plan, that is eligible, some rent, utilities, some things. So where can you get eight weeks of operations just given to you that uh, except for the virus, you would have had to incur this debt anyway. So um, I just wanted to mention that the SBA also put on, the, um, on their website, it's called the Finder Lender tab because there are a lot of different banks. Some may not have the capacity. They're, you know, the SBA is actually has to put some of them through the queue. So sometimes it's not on the bank's behalf. Uh, fortunately, one of the reasons why we bought Fifth Third and PNC is that they literally were um, immediately in terms of trying to make sure that our businesses and our business members and the business community that they were up and ready to go. And they were one of the first in terms of us getting on the calls, 
getting information and trying to bring it to you accurately and so you don't miss a step in getting this done. I would like to encourage you to pay attention to the payment protection program because it is the most robust. And yep. because as you can see, we don't know how long this is gonna last. So if you go for some of the other, there's payroll relief, but some of these don't always, are not that you can go out and do the whole smorgasbord of them. Some of them kind of cancel out each other. And again, that's why you would wanna call Carl or call us and help you, or we can check with the SBA to see what those are so that you can put this behind you, know at least you're set for a couple of months while we see what's coming on the next couple of months. Because one of the other things that we as businesses should be looking at is when this happens, or if this isn't the last of it, or say it does last till August, what is our next move to expand or, or tweak our companies? so that we can operate in this environment? Are we taking care of our customers? So are you reaching out to them? Are you reminding them to do the census? Are you, I don't care if you're a hairstylist or, or automobile mechanic, the guy who was changing your oil should be calling your customers to remind them that the light, the brake light on your car, stay in place, stay home, but you're okay with it. Can you imagine what that will do to your customer base? And again, this is met, so that even if you've laid someone off in February when you first, or businesses slow down, feel free to call those people back. If you put them on your payroll, effective March or now April, they can be included in the loan and those numbers that Charles, uh, that uh, Carl put up earlier is based on your payroll, which is why they're giving you the 12 months grace to see what your average was. So it is room for you to add these positions on or to put on new. And again, even with that, that's just to base your loan. At the end, if I added people in April and I expanded and I got healthcare and my expenses swell, I still get at the end of June, I still get to be that part of my forgiveness grant portion of it. So if my loan up front is only 100,000, but I created enough jobs where I'm at towards the end, I still might be eligible for some. The SBA is working on their fourth stimulus package to take all of these things into consideration. Yeah, so it's months before, when you apply for it, um, a couple things you need to know, just fill out the full application so that it's totally done. And that way we can just key in your information, make it easy for your banker because they've got, they're doing volume of this right now. I printed a data entry guy. So, um, you know, having a bank account is ideal because the money needs to go somewhere. All right, and so being able to put it into that bank account will make it easier instead of having to figure out how to wire it to another place. Um, then, you know, we will apply for you. You're gonna, with our system, it's electronic. So we're gonna send you back an email, then you're gonna upload your payroll information into that, your proof. And then I'm gonna hit a button and submit it. And about 24 hours later, you're gonna get a, um, an email back saying, you know, here, here's the, Here's your um, signature, e-signature. So we're not meeting physically anymore. This is different banking. We're not going to be physically seeing each other. You're just going to electronically sign off. And so it's very important that you use an email address that's unique to yourself because we're going to basically use that to send you that email so you can do it. And then uh, what it's looking like right now is it's taking seven to 10 days for it to be funded. So I put a bunch of these through a couple weeks. Uh, was it like Thursday or Wednesday of last week? So we expect to see our first uh, bit of money come in people's accounts on the 17th. Um, you won't have to make any payments for six months, all right? So very important that you, you follow my steps of filling out your application and then pulling down that payroll report and putting it on a folder in your computer. And through this next eight weeks, all your utility bills, scan them, drop them in that folder. All the, um, you know, you pay, proof that you paid your rent, drop it in that folder because Six months from now, life happens, things get busy. We can't remember what we did. You know, you wanna be organized, especially with this. This is literally could be free money for you, for your business. Um, so I'm open Carl, to do, questions. Carl, do the documents have to be in PDF format? For I love the application, PDF. Or can they be Excel or some bank? Can be Excel. It can be Excel, but they can change it. You can play around and type on it. So a PDF is fantastic for protecting yourself and just making sure that nobody can change your stuff. Um, but both are fine. It's just a matter, like if you want to make it easy on your banker, um, 
fill out the application and then send the payroll proof. So that way you can justify it. Um, like I said, 1% rate. So, you know, we're all business owners. We need to make decisions. 75% of the money has to be used for payroll. You can pay yourself a check. All right. So if you, if you haven't got you, make sure you get yourself a paycheck and have proof that you usually pay yourself like that. Um, and then, you know, just, if you got a, the other 25%, if you need to do something with your business mind, like buy inventory for your, you know, whatever business or get some, if you're a daycare and you closed up and you had to buy the food again, you know, that's fine. It's okay. Um, but that part of it is at 1% over 24 months. That 24 month part is so small and tight that the payment's kind of high. So if you, you have to get the amount lowered by showing the payroll that you paid out. So, all right. Um, keep going if you want. Next thing. All right. So anybody have an SBA loan? Just so you know, the 7A loans are, they're paying you guys six months of your payments for you. Um, so if you have an SBA loan in place right now, they're going to be doing six months of payments. You don't have to do anything. It's already being automatically done. Um, you know, so that's just a heads up. And Emilian talked about that $10,000 grant. You can apply for that at sba.com. Um, I'd recommend you do that. But remember that um, you just need to disclose it when you with your um, SBA PPP loan application. Um, for new loans, so how long ago did you, okay, just tell me if it's, if it's on, on the books right now, then it's six months of them making the payments for you. If when you say new loans, are you applying tomorrow? That's, that's different. So um, you're probably gonna say no, because they're not taking on really that situation right now. They're focused primarily on keeping the economy going. So if you already had a loan with SBA, 7A, they're giving you six months of no payments, you're automatically pulling out of your account, they're not gonna pull out of your account, they're just gonna give you credit for it. All right. Um, so if you don't have a banker, I gave you guys my phone number, I gave you my email address. My team, I have five branches on the south side. Um, they've got drive-throughs. It's gonna be very difficult for you to go into a branch and sit down. This is totally different, this is COVID. So what we're gonna do is send you, if you're interested in getting a relationship, I'll send you account opening list and I'll CC you with a banker. That banker is gonna be my point person to collect all your information, and open your account. Once your account is established, then I will put in your PPP application. Not before, once it's established. Because I copy and paste a lot of that information off of there because I have to know my customer, all right? So um, I can't, it's gonna be a little bit of fraud with this. And I'll be honest with you, like you don't really wanna deal with the government on this type of thing for fraud. So if you're gonna put something through, just make sure that it's in line, it's safe, it's secure. Make sure you use a payroll company or somebody or CPA that's gonna give you the good documentation you need to make sure that you're covered. Um, and then you'll be fine. Whatever you get, if you don't need it, just give it back. There's no prepayment penalty. And then you pay it off and you'll be good. So. Uh, and I think, uh, Carl, you sent us a link and I, I, the staff has been doing such a great job which to put that information on there because I think you just sent us the most recent link in terms yeah. of where they can apply. The application is really very simple. It's the, I think the, the most time consuming is getting the documentation together yep. and making sure that it is. So if it's not clear to you, if it, if you can't find how much you paid yourself and your employees, then um, they can't find it. So you just want to not give them, you know, we've, we've, uh, some people have sent me some information and uh, if you just send me bank statements, but you don't say that on the 10th is uh, the time that my money that I paid myself. I mean, you would have to highlight that so we would know, okay, it was, uh, you know, your, your business account. And then on the 10th, my owner's draw or whatever was put into my personal account. And here's my statements for that. So don't just load them up with documentation with the expectation that they can figure it out because the volume, appropriately so, is voluminous. Make sure that it just tells your story. Then it should have a cover sheet. 12 months of my bank statement, this is my draw, this is my employee payroll, this is my list of people. Uh, and again, if you're using the services, it's easy, but I do understand and have saw some of the paperwork where some of us have not 
use um, services. I just want to mention one of the things that uh, we've always, as Chatham Business Association, advise our business members, and it really is, uh, we're proud of that as an organization, that that has probably been uh, part of our uniqueness. We have always advocated that businesses on the technology side need to be able to operate as part of business growth. We've always advocated that it's important that you pay yourself as an owner and that it's two separate accounts and that we set you up, which is why we have these relationships with the banks because they teach us because all of those things that we have advocated for, you, you have to do it for your certification, which by the way, downtime, you still need to check your certification. So it's a good time to put your staff to work uh, Beverly has uh, been really great with doing a GATA certification. She can walk you through it virtually. I think she's doing a, a webinar for uh, Senator Sims on Thursday. Beverly and Charles, uh, Patlin, they can help you go through this process to make sure that you're looking at your MBE, your DBE, making sure they're up to date. Let's make look at your, your various NACE codes. Let's make sure that they match your experience. This is while we're going through this uh, pandemic, we can take the time to literally catch up because as a business owner, we're always in the business, you know, we're always in the hustle mode of it. So, and you can pay some administrative and your staff to help you with the growth and development of your business. So I don't want to, while you, if you've put those things in place that, you know, we have talked about through the years, now it's coming to fruition where it's coming to your benefit. And if you haven't, now's the time to figure it out because as Carl said, we got six months where you're going to have to make sure that if whatever order it needs to be documented is, it's moving forward. If not, you're going to end up with a loan. Now, yeah. that's not the worst thing, but the reality of it is why when we should set ourselves up to get the grant versus the loan. Do you understand that? Because it converts into a loan if the documentation come the end of June isn't acceptable to SBA so that the bank can uh, get their guarantee. I just dropped a referral on the uh, group chat. If you need a payroll provider, Jaren is there for you. She's with Paycor. That's our partner for Fifth Third. You can use ADP, you can use Paylocity, you can use anybody. Please pay your people through a payroll provider or use your QuickBooks. Make sure you have it the way you always document it. Get that nice clean report that you can slap in the hand of a banker that you gave that gave you that loan and say, this is proof that I paid these people and I want my loan reduced. Um, Axion's website, I think, is um, one of the what is a good website if you want to get the 50000 from the city. They have a link there. Uh, it's an app that you can walk yourself through if you want to apply. Again, you can call us um, before you decide on where you want to go so we can be strategic with you, help you make uh, get a partner. I can tell you um, I, we need to send kudos to Carl because he really does answer the phone. He's, he's been on top of it, and he works really hard on behalf of us, and we appreciate you. For that job. So here's, a, here's, here's the best way to get me right now because I'm going to jump back on my application inputting, my data entry. You've got an application. Linda's got it. Fill it out. Send it to me in the email. Send me a text. I gave you my cell phone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type all your stuff in there. If I have a question, I'm going to call you. How you know I'm doing your, your, your application is you will get three emails from me. Based on the, app, the email address that you gave me, you'll get three emails. Two are disclosures saying that you have been applying, and then the third is me asking you to upload your payroll to that application. So um, naturally, I will respond to you guys, right? But you know this phone is humming. And so um, sometimes I'm on the phone talking to somebody to get their application in. But the fastest way, it's funny. Usually it's a whole coffee and a conversation and a lunch and a banker and sit down. This is different. This is just give me the application and give me the payroll and I'll get you some money. That sounds good. Uh, Beverly, are you on the phone? One of the things we wanted to do, do we have any more questions? Um, Charles, Charles and Patlin and Carletta, you all did a great job. I see questions here. I think we answered them or it looks like Carl did. 
Did we get them all? I don't want to miss anybody who was kind enough to uh, jump on this call with us. We owe you breakfast. We haven't forgotten. We got you covered. <laughs> as soon as this opens, we, we're trying to figure out if we're going to do this or we've also been thinking of ways to um, support our restaurant businesses. So we're thinking about getting guest certificates because we really did not want to not give you breakfast this morning. So we're, you know, we've got Richard enough figuring it out. And also, it's, it, we want to make sure that we support our restaurants. So we've figured out ways that we can buy in advance gift certificates. So don't be surprised if you hear from us. We'll figure this out. Uh, Melinda? Yes. So um, uh, I'm putting together something right now where I'm going to um, feed the, uh, the first responders, hospital workers, grocery workers, Anybody that will make it to five loads, I'm going to uh, give them a, a, a gift card of $2,000 where they can get, well, not the individuals, but $2,000. Oh, I'm like, I'm a first responder. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have it like that. No, $2,000 to, to five loads. So once it runs out, it runs out. But uh, I mean, anybody, sanitation worker, people that are out there, you know, uh, have to go to work, essential workers. Um, so I'm, I'm working it out with Connie right now, so. Well, we might be able to, we should be able to support you in that. Okay. Um, we got Charles and Adam on the line who are still available. I mean, they put this webinar together. I think they can still virtually walk you through, help with your businesses, you know, with your website, how you're reaching your customers, how to set up Zoom and other meetings. Um, so Charles and Adam, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. So they're available, you know, and again, our, our phones are open, 773-994-5006. Beverly and Patlin are covering them from 10 to 3, answering any questions or getting you to one of us if you need us. Um, I think, um, and Beverly, are you there? We have a question too. Uh, oh, okay, let we me have hear a question it. From Nicole. She wants to know if you are the only employee and don't have a payroll system, how do you prove income for PPP? Who wants to answer that? You, Melinda? I will, and then Carl probably might want to chime in too. I don't, he's on mute right now. I think he's on the call. So the main thing is, as we mentioned, so if you're an only employee, again, it's that your paperwork supports your story that as a 1099er or as the owner or the employee, this is where, how I paid myself. So there should be some consistencies in that in terms of, and I don't, you know, an Excel sheet over your bank statements, I think will suffice uh, information that just shows how you paid yourself. So if you pull money from your company or you pay yourself, there's a transaction to it. There's a transfer from one space to another space or one account to another account you need to document that and then you need to, to you know, as I said, uh, uh, we've helped some business just put a cover sheet that if you notice the 10th, this draw was made, to me, that was my payroll. It helps if your payment from your business account to your personal account is documented versus you uh, randomly drawing. But if that's the case, that's the case, highlight it and let's see if it is acceptable. Yeah. It's, it's, it's probably going to be, but just be reasonable and protect yourself. You know, if you can do something that payroll company, I mean, we're giving you 2.5 times your payroll for eight weeks. You can use that 0.5 to support the cost of some type of payroll company to make sure that you're organized. Um, just do something to keep, keep it all in order. I just mentioned some of the paperwork that was submitted to us by some of the businesses, like for instance, they may have used their, you know, again, which is not the best practice. They may have used their business account to pay their personal mortgage. It's, that's a little different story. That's why we're advocating the pay the business should pay the owner and then the owner should pay their own bills because now that's a different twist to a story. And the question is, even if the banks accept it, the reality of it, will the federal government say that that is acceptable to be forgivable? So you keep in mind there's a layer to this. There's a legislation behind that guarantee. And the legislation from our conversations with the SBA administration, they wanna make sure that they're not paying your old debt. 
and that they're not paying things that are not did not affect your business uh, via the coronavirus. So a, the clearest path, the most uncluttered path that pretty much can tell your story without you having to call Carl and tell Carl the story. If you have, if you feel you got to pick up the phone and tell me or Carl or PNC, we got to figure that out because it needs to be in writing and it needs to be clear cut. And it needs to be so that six months when we pick up the paper, we understood why you submitted and applied for the loan. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. I recommend every one of you guys, business owners, use it, please, um, because we want you to be around six months from now, or excuse me, at least two, uh, at least eight weeks from now, we want you to still be around. And you know, think about what happened during the Great Depression when everybody got lost their jobs and then they stood in the line asking for employment benefits. We don't want to have a bunch of people standing in line with COVID trying to get unemployment benefits. We want to keep them in their jobs with their employers, with their structure. We want them to know that when the, when the state comes back alive again and goes back to work again, that they know where they're going. And this money is going to allow them people a structure, pay them their paychecks, keep them on their insurance. And um, once this thing is settled, then they can just come on back to you and y'all can get back to work. So this says, individual without payroll i can show business expenses paid from business revenue just no formal payroll will this be accepted and again yeah, i think we're like a 1099 you're like a 1099 yeah you can you can submit with that so i, I this is that uh, i would definitely for the when you get the money i would definitely have a um payroll provider so you can justify it that's happening with realtors that's happening with people i've seen one-off people um so yeah, you can do that. Yeah, and just remember, uh, one of the reasons why they it, the payroll taxes for 2018 have been filed, right? So whatever your process is in terms of at the end of the year, you did 1099, you did something. Those numbers are, are pretty much what they're going to use. Those are your formal numbers you filed to the federal government. I mean, start there. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, Beverly, are you, do we have them all or I use this QuickBooks? Okay. Yeah, right. I'm here. <clears throat> so one of the things we want to do um, is also acknowledge our members that signed up and uh, Beverly has a report. Usually her and Carl present and uh, we can't take the picture with you, but we still want to acknowledge you. So Beverly, do you have a report? I do. All right. Hi, guys. Okay, so the membership report, and this is from March the 10th uh, up until today. We have five new members added. We have um, L and M Realty, uh, the representative, Ms. Diane Bolden, uh, as a classic member. We have First Secure Bank and Trust Company. Uh, represented by Mr. Terry Johnson as a classic member. We have um, DC Mad Hatter renewed, uh, Mr. Daryl Caldwell, Passages Alternative Living Programs, that's uh, represented by Ms. Lily Sanders, and also Big Heart Eatery, uh, represented by Mr. Peter McDonald uh, as a classic member. So we want to thank you, you guys for either renewing or becoming a member with us in the midst of this epidemic. Thanks so much. So we have your certificates and uh, when we meet again, we will take uh, pictures. We, again, we're gonna send out uh, a link. There is a town hall meeting after this where I will join some elected officials, LaShawn Ford and other community partners to talk about uh, the effect this virus has had on the black community. Uh, we will keep you posted and updated on any information that we have. Uh, again, we have that website page. Um, I want to thank, I don't know if Pat Link can talk or Carletta can talk, but I do want to thank all the staff. They have done a great job in getting us through, keeping the doors open. And this was prior to us even knowing about the Payment Protection Program, their commitment to the organization, uh, respecting social distancing and uh, again, pivoting to providing relevant services to our business community and making sure that we're here. Uh, I want to personally say thanks, and I think the membership will want to join me 
is saying that as well as well as the board of directors. So um, PNC had to get off the phone. Um, but again, PNC and Fifth Third, um, there are other banks I am um, that are, I'm sure, um, doing the best job that they can. But I could tell you that every question we've had, they're all in and their commitment to making sure that our members economically survive this, this uh, epidemic crisis that we're going through. And by us going through this crisis, it sets all of our businesses up to endeavor or endure any crisis. And uh, honestly, I just have so much faith in black businesses and their resilience. So thank you for joining us today. Gwen, do you have? Wait a minute. I, I just wanted to uh, also remind our, our, mem our members, you know, the 2020 census is, uh, if this coronavirus hasn't told us how important resources for infrastructure uh, and being counted is important. I don't know what is, but um, the the with the 2020 census, you can do it over the phone now. You can do internet. Um, a lot of the fears that I'm hearing uh, back, of course, from the Latino community is immigration, but the Black community is you know government being in my business and and you know, but I want to encourage. Uh, our community and to encourage your extended community, please, please, please be counted in the 2020 census. We need our hospitals, we need our schools, we need our infrastructure. This represents $675 billion a year. And if we're not count, if we're not counted, we're under resourced. So please, please, please uh, be counted. Yeah, the census has been going on since 1790 under George Washington and uh, administration. And uh, please, if you get, if you do online, if you do it on the phone, they won't show up at your house. <laughs> so uh, please be counted. And if you have any questions, please reach out to to us. If you haven't got your your card in in the mail. Uh, please let us know and we can reach out to to our partners to make sure that sh that you, your family, your mom, your kids, uh, one of the hardest groups to count is uh, un uh, fam uh, anybody under five, right? So uh, all the babies, all the new babies uh, need to be included. So please. Thank you for that. Yeah, please. And when you uh, call your customers, remind them to do the census. It's really important. Uh, Gwen, you got any other, anybody else closing comments before we adjourn? We will be here next month. Uh, and again, we have the workshop on Thursday. Is the link out, Charles and Beverly, for the, uh, oh, you know what? I think it may be full already. I'm not sure. We'll double check. So again, we. Um, it's still in order to get uh, money from the state government. You still have to be registered with state government via GATA, which is a, it's just a certification process. And it takes a couple of days and it might take some help. So you might want to attend that workshop. The uh, city of Chicago to get the $50,000 loan. Uh, BACP is opening. They are still processing permits. So you may not be able to pick up a, a um, a printed copy of your business license, but you still need those things and you can do them online. Again, if you have any problems, you reach out to us and let us know so that if you go after these loans or something, the paperwork is in, in place. They have waived some, some requirements, but uh, the federal government is the one I know who's been uh, very robust in making sure that they have tried to remove as many restrictions and as layers as they can uh, working with the lenders to see if they can get the funding to you as quickly as possible. Okay. Any other closing comments before we go? Do we get Hi. Hi. This is Sorry. Yeah, is... oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who was talking? Hi. This is Nigeria Towns with Chicago Public Schools. Hello, Melinda. Hello, Gwen. Hi. And Hi. I, Hi. I just. I just want to jump in and let you all know that um, 
Um, Melinda will be presenting uh, to our certified minority and um, women-owned businesses tomorrow. I just had a meeting with my team. I'm sorry I was late with you guys. I had a meeting with my team this morning. We have over 290 participants that RSVP to this meeting. Um, so if it's 250, if it's 150 show up, I'm happy. Um, but I just want to just let you know that even though we are, A, CPS is still in business. B, we have a couple of solicitations that's out on the street. Remember when I came to your Chatham business meeting, I was talking about transportation, you know, it was coming up. It hit the streets on um, on last on Friday, so um, I will basically a will send the information out to everyone. But b just thank Melinda Kelly um, for participating in our webinar tomorrow from eleven to. I just told my boss I was like, you know what, we're just gonna move it to eleven to twelve thirty, just in case, because I've been watching webinars lately. Can you send that to us? Um, yes, I, I, was, I like to participate tomorrow. Sure, I would definitely send it over. And we have uh, Melinda. Melinda brought an SBA for us. And then we also have Hysia because I had to balance it out with my minority um, participation. Very good. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. We, we appreciate the opportunity. Also, can we acknowledge our board member, Elaine Granger, who joined the call? Elaine, hey, Elaine. Elaine, you want to say something with AT&T? Is she unmuted? I can. I'm very quickly. Hi, everyone. Things that at and is doing, if you're not aware, they're giving, um, they just announced yesterday that they're giving three months free to nurses and doctors. So that came out yesterday. There's also access for, if you have any kids, um, at and access is internet service for $10 a month. So you can use that. And then there's also forgiveness on your Uh, went out. Say it again. Freezed. Yeah, she's freezing. You forgiving all our bills? Is that what you said? <laughs> uh, lose her? Yeah, we lost her. Okay. Let me, uh, I'm going to text her right quick and see if she can, because uh, it sounded like what she said was kind of important. Let's see here. We dropped you. Uh, and I know Corey's not on, but uh, we can also send the link. The um, There's a lot of relief for your utilities as well. So that's through a, um, the state is kind of, has the link to that, but we'll send that. I know the state also has a couple of links they sent us where they're offering housing vouchers up to $1,000. So We'll put those things on there because you or your employees may need that. Because the main thing is we just really do all need to take care of our employees. Uh, one, because they take care of us. And this is a pretty good opportunity for us to show them, show our appreciation as employers by making sure that they get these. Mm -hmm. Now, she said that we get the message. I'm going to tell her no, because we didn't get it. but. Um, what we can do is also make sure we get that information because it did sound like it might. Be helpful. If anything, Charles, there's a way afterwards, maybe we can get her recorded message on there and get it out to the group. Hey, Melinda, I got one thing to add. Yeah, she records it. Okay. I'll just tell her that you'll reach out to her and record it okay okay she said she'll send it okay go ahead carl i'm sorry yeah, just the one thing is guys be safe this next week is going to be kind of rough um so if you haven't done so already you can use your phone and download julasco app or all these and they can deliver your groceries to your house it might cost you 18 bucks but you can order all your groceries through the julasco or all these or instacart app uh whoever you shop with and then somebody will drop the stuff off to your house um, and that might cut down your exposure. So try to stay out of the stores and out of everything as much as you can. You know, thank you for saying that, Carl. Yeah. Okay. 
So I think that's it for me, Gwen, unless you ready to adjourn or you got something else? That's it. Nothing else. We will see everyone next month. Same bat channel, same bat station. <laughs> I'll have a Charleston out the information for the uh, meeting, the town hall meeting that follows right after this at 1030, I think it is. Thank so, like, you, everyone. Okay. Thank you for taking time out. We'll Thank see you. everybody. Everyone have a good care. rest of the day. Well, I think we hear you now, Pat Lou. Finally. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank okay. you all. all right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.